How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for, and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? Like that. All right, so today I wanted to clear up a mistake I see or hear a lot of voice actors making all the time, and it's totally understandable because there's a lot of misinformation out there about this exact thing. It also seems like the right thing to do initially before really breaking it all down and thinking about it, so let's get into it and do exactly that. All right, so I'm just going to cut right to the chase here. When you're reading a script, and let's say it's for a video game or animation, though it could definitely be for a standard commercial, but if there's a part in the script where you go from talking to yelling, are you turning or backing away from the microphone? If you're doing this, unfortunately, it's not the best thing to do in that situation. Now, sometimes we're forced to do so, and we'll get into that in a moment, but technically it's not the correct thing to do, and I hear so many voice actors make this mistake. So with all of that said, tell me which one of these samples sounds correct to you. How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for, and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? Most of you probably went with choice number two and that's because it sounded natural. Choice number one sounded really jarring because the talking part in the audio sounded great and then the yelling part of the audio sounded kind of boxy and further away. It wasn't consistent with the rest of the audio. This is the mistake I see and hear all the time, and I've had a few students tell me that they've heard it said that we don't yell into people's ears, so that's why we back or turn away from the mic. Okay, let's break that down real quick. We also don't talk into people's ears, you know, unless you have some kind of juicy secret to tell them. But here's the thing. That's exactly what we're doing when we're speaking into a microphone. We're essentially speaking directly into someone's ear because the diaphragm of a microphone acts as someone's ear. I mean, think about it. Let's take mouth noise, for example. Mouth noise, if you don't know, is this. So sorry about that. But you ever notice how you don't hear that when you're speaking to someone in a normal setting? That's because in a normal situation, you're not speaking directly into someone's ear. However, when speaking into a microphone, mouth noise becomes very, very pronounced. Voice actors know this very well. And that's because we're essentially speaking directly into someone's ear. So then why would you speak directly into someone's ear and then change the audio consistency by turning or backing away from the mic when you have to yell? It doesn't make sense, but you can also look at it this way. Let's say you're walking down the street and you see someone about to step out in front of a vehicle that's moving pretty quickly. Do you stop and think to yourself, ooh, I'm about to yell at this person, so let me turn or back away from them before I yell. No, you're just going to immediately yell and tell them, hey, you know, don't jump out in front of that car. You're going to probably die or get seriously injured. You don't have time to stop and think, hmm, I don't want to yell at them directly in their ear, so let me turn away from them. Or better yet, you're arguing with someone and right before things get a little too heated and you raise your voice, you stop and think to yourself, hmm. I'm about to raise my voice at this person in this argument. You know what? I don't want to yell into their ears, so I'm going to turn her back away from them. No, you don't do that. You just raise your voice. You don't even think about it. You just raise your voice in the conversation like you would in any normal circumstance. That's what sounds natural. That's what we're used to. It's normal. The only reason that you'd want to turn or back away from the microphone is if you had directions in the script that stated something like, James yells at Amanda from across the pond. Then okay, if it's from the perspective of Amanda, then you do need to sound far away from the other side of the pond. So now that we know when we're on a microphone, we're literally speaking directly into someone's ear the entire time, you see how picking one part of that voiceover to turn or back away from the mic doesn't really make that much sense. And unfortunately, it will cause the audio to have inconsistency and sound different than the rest of the audio in the voiceover. And the problem with that is, trust me when I say listeners will notice, especially if it's something like an audiobook or something like that. I mean, think about it. Something's really, really consistent, hasn't changed, and all of a sudden it changes. Sometimes drastically, depending on how the space is treated, they're definitely going to notice. So now you're probably asking, okay, James... How do I record that type of dynamic voiceover or audio without clipping the microphone? You know, I have to turn or back away from the microphone so I don't blast the microphone into Kingdom Come and completely clip the audio. Ah, but you don't. Well, thanks for watching. Just kidding, I'm going to show you exactly how to do just that with a few different examples. There are a few ways to get around it that I'll go through right now. 
Now, really quickly, none of this will matter if you don't have a solid foundation when it comes to recording audio. So to get that solid foundation, sign up for my totally free course, Start Recording in the description below. All right, number one, record the quiet part separate from the loud part. Now, this method does take some practice and acting skills, and I'm a little out of practice, so bear with me. Let's take the example from before and record this using this method. All right, so now I'm gonna record the quiet part, but I am gonna go through the entire thing because I'm just gonna cut them together. And you don't really wanna do one part at a time because then it does get even harder to make it sound like one cohesive read where you didn't stop in the middle of the read. So I'm gonna read the entire thing, but again, I'm just gonna cut out the loud part during the quiet part, and then the next time I'm gonna cut the quiet part out and only use the loud part, so here we go. How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? How many times do I have to tell you? How many times do I have to tell you? How many times do I have to tell you? One eternity later. When you're done with it. Okay, let's see if that worked. Now, once you have the two takes you're happy with, you'll go into your DAW, bring them together, and voila. If the acting and editing is good, then it will sound like one cohesive take. All right, so here we are in audition. I have the quiet part that I recorded and the loud part that I recorded. Um, I also have the first take I did where I had to turn her back away here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and mute that because we don't need it. But our goal here is to take the quiet and the loud part and just edit them together and make it sound like it was just one cohesive take where we didn't stop in the middle and turn our gain down and then start again. So this is going to take some editing skills. And this is what sucks about being a voice actor nowadays is you do have to have some proficiency in editing and being an engineer to some extent. You don't have to dive super deep, but you do need to have a good solid foundation and know your way around engineering and editing uh, an, an okay amount. And it sucks. I don't agree with it. I think it, it blows because as a voice actor, most people get into this because they love the acting side of it. And you guys, unfortunately, aren't able to concentrate on being an actor anymore because you have to concentrate so hard on all of the editing and the audio and, and levels and all that good stuff. Um, but that is what it is nowadays. It's a necessity. You recording in your home studio. You know it is what it is. So you do. It's going to take some editing. It's going to take some practice and some work here. Uh, you do want to have multiple takes, so you have multiple takes to edit together. Because again, the more takes you have, the better your chances are that it will sound like one take. Because one might not work, and you might have to go to the other one. So here we are. I have a couple of takes. Now I've already gone through and figured out what my favorite takes are, which actually were the last takes. So I'm just going to take this all the way down to the last take. And then same with this one, all the way down to the last take. And I'll go ahead and just cut off the end here because we don't need that. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and with the quiet part, I'm just going to delete the loud part where I, where I start getting loud and then vice versa with the um, loud part. So let's just go ahead and zoom in here and solo this and give it a listen. How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for? And it Okay, right there is where I start to get loud, right? right around there. So what I'm actually going to do is bring this back. And what I want to do is save that breath right there. That breath is going into the loud part. And that this is actually going to help it help make it sound more natural. Um, and typically, you want to take the breath from that first read here. You don't want to take the breath from the second read where you start again, because it will be kind of jarring in most cases, and you'll be able to tell. Sometimes you might need to take it from the second take, but normally that's not the case. So again, I'm going to do the same thing here and go um, to where I start yelling. How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for? And it. Okay, so right there is where I start yelling. And here's the breath. But I'm going to take it out of this one, right? I'm going to take it out. I'm going to bring it back to this one and then look here and see. All right, let's try that. And let's see how this sounds. And this may not be quite it. So let's just play and listen through. So here we go. How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? All right, actually, that sounded pretty darn good. Um... Let me let's do it one more time. How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? I mean, that's pretty close. I might go in here and take that volume down just a little bit, just a, just a touch, just a hair. Um, and now let's listen to it. 
How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? There you go. I mean, this was a very lucky, this was very lucky. Normally it takes a bit more editing uh, than what just happened. Um, but that that goes to show you that's why you want multiple takes and you want to be happy with those takes and you want to be conscious of how you go into the yelling part. You don't want to have it be jarring and different from your reads, which is one of the reasons I did multiple takes is I was trying to nail uh, the way I delivered it in the quiet read um, beforehand. And look, everything worked worked out really well. And just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and take this one here and let's put it back to back just to give you an idea of the difference. All right, so let me go in here. Okay, here we are. Unmute that and give it a go. How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? How many times do I have to tell you that's not what we use this for and it doesn't go there when you're done with it? I mean, to an engineer's ears, which is who you're trying to please, you're not trying to please your own ears, that is a big difference, right? Every engineer you send your audio off to, if you sent all this off to them, that, that would be a big difference to their ears. I mean, the good news is, my space for this one where I turned and backed away, my space is really, really heavily treated. Now, you don't want to go overboard when you're treating a space. That's a whole nother conversation for another day. But you do want it pretty heavily treated, especially when the space is really small, like a closet like mine and like so many other voice actors. But the problem is most voice actors audio that I hear, their space isn't heavily treated. It's just somewhat treated. So when they do back or turn away from their mic, it is a huge difference. It's a world of difference. And and trust me, every engineer in the world is going to be able to hear it like nails on a chalkboard. And I mean, it's like right now I'm in my control room. I'm out here at my editing desk. I'm not, and it's nowhere near as heavily treated out here. So for example, if I were to be talking and then back away from the mic out here, you hear how big of a difference that is? There's not nearly as much treatment out here uh, as there is in my closet, so there's a really big difference, and that's normally what I'm hearing. I'm hearing a huge difference in most actors, or most voice actors that send me audio. Now, there are going to be days where you have to back away or turn away from your mic. That's going to happen because you might, your hands might be tied. And in, in a lot of cases, if it's a really dynamic read like video games or animation, they're going to be understanding. They're going to be understanding because you don't have an engineer there to turn your gain up and down or you may not have two microphones to use at the same time like most people do in professional situations. And that's the other thing that makes the whole we don't yell into people's ear argument not make a whole lot of sense because if you go into a professional studio, they're using most of the time two microphones and recording the quiet part with one level and the loud part with another level. We're going to get into that in a bit, but that never will you go into a studio and have them be like, all right, now turn and back away from the mic unless you need to sound far away. If you need to sound far away, then they will. So that argument doesn't hold a lot of water. It doesn't really make a whole lot of sense for multiple reasons, but I hope this has given you a really clear understanding of why and of things that you can do to get around it. And with that said, uh, let's get back into the video and talk about the other ways that you can get around this hurdle. Number two, just use the Rode NT1 5th Gen. Now, if you haven't seen my review of the Rode NT1 5th Gen, check it out in the description of this video or somewhere up here maybe. Because if you use that mic in its USB 32-bit mode, then you can't clip your audio. To see this in action, go check out my review, like I said, in the description below. All right, and number three, use compression or limiting or both. Now, you've got to really know what you're doing with this one because compression and limiting can really ruin your audio very quickly, if not used the correct way. I cover all the ins and outs of compression and limiting and all that good stuff in my courses over on my website, audiodoctor.tech slash courses, in the description below if you're curious and want to find out more. Typically, in 99.9999999% of cases, casting directors, clients, and agents don't want you adding effects to your audio because it ties the hands of the engineer that you're sending your audio off to on the other side. However, this is mostly for book jobs. You have a little more leniency when it comes to auditions. However, you still really need to know what you're doing. Your goal is to make the effects that you add unnoticeable, as transparent as possible. And when it comes to this example, it's not super easy to do, but again, this is an audition. 
not a book job. And the people on the other end know that, and they know that this type of audio is really difficult for most people to record and record well, so you do have a little bit of leniency. If you properly set a compressor or a limiter up front before you start recording, it can fix the issue of clipping your audio. Now, you have to have something like an Apollo Twin or another mic or interface that has the software that will allow you to use front-end processing, but this can be the fix if you need. All right, number four, use two microphones. Now, this is what all the professionals do in the studio most of the time, and this may not be feasible for you because, you know, two microphones can be pretty expensive, especially if you're trying to match the microphone and your main mic is a pretty expensive microphone. However, as I always say, you could just go with a Rode NT1. Whether it's the fourth or the fifth gen, they're all incredibly affordable and you could just buy two of these suckers and be good to go. So if you happen to have two microphones, whether they're the Rode NT1s or a microphone that's different from the other, but they're pretty identical, or you understand things like post-processing and EQ and things like that so that you can really make the mic sound identical. If you understand things like that, then this could be a feasible option for you. So you can just get two mics to record at once. One mic that's set for the talking level and then the other mic that's set for the really loud yelling part. And then when you're happy and you're done with your recording, you just bring those two recordings together much like we did in the first example and voila, no clipping and everything sounds really cohesive. The audio doesn't drastically change all of a sudden in the middle of the take. Now there are definitely other ways to get around this and comment below with how you get around this problem. I'm really curious to see what you do in your situation. I really hope this video was helpful and that you got a lot out of it. And when it comes to yelling into people's ears, well, you know what they say.